Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, for helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a, a vertical line that represents the current date. Okay, so let's crack on. So basically, I'll, I'll talk you through the, the setup we've got here. So we've got a scenario where we've got a trend of maintenance costs. But once it gets past the current date, it becomes a forecast because we've got the actual costs, and which are a cost that are obviously booked already. And we've got forecast costs into the future that we want to basically um, trend. So we'll just quickly look at the data model. It's fairly straightforward. We've got a date and we've got the maintenance costs and we've got the forecast costs. Now the forecast costs were, um, were only started to be populated as of the 1st of January and um, we can see that if that date is in the, in the past then we've actually got the actual costs and the forecast costs. So in terms of actually creating this line chart here, I will take you to this one here. It's fairly straightforward. We've got the week end ending date, which is taken at the dates table there. Now, if you want, if you're not sure about a dates table, I've never used one, then I'll leave a link to a video below that explains how to create one and why you need one. Um, and then we've got this measure here, which is forecast or maintenance costs. Now, what that does is it, um, it determines whether it's going to display the maintenance cost or the forecast cost. Okay, so if there is actual maintenance costs, we want to display them. And if there is only forecast costs, then we want to display them. So I'll just quickly talk you through what that is. So if it's not blank maintenance costs, which means we've got an actual cost, then we want to display that actual cost. Otherwise, we're going to display the forecast cost. Okay, so that's a little bit of setup there. Next, we're going to go in and we're going to add in um, uh, one of these horizontal lines. So the vertical lines. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how you can do that and then we'll go and do it. So under this analytics section, we've got the option to add different lines. Okay, now one of the options here is an x-axis constant line. And if you open that up, we can add in a date. So let's just say we wanted to add in today's date. We can see it is in here. We've added a date. Okay, now that is not going to change based on whenever it gets refreshed. That's going to be a static date. However, what we can do is we've got this FX button here, so we can calculate what that date is going to be. So to do that, what we need to do is first of all, create a new measure, which is going to be the date today. Okay. Now I've already created one in here. So I'll just quickly show you what that is. Really straightforward. And it's just today's date equals today. Okay. So if I go and look at this um, this today function and we can see here it returns the current date in the date time format. Okay, so it returns the current date. Now this, um, it's worth mentioning that today returns the current date only. Um, there is another function which is called now, which is going to return exactly the same date but it also returns the time as well. Now the date and the time will be the last date or, or time that the data was refreshed in the in the actual Power BI file. Okay, so it doesn't update automatically every time you open a file. You've got to refresh it, so it'll be updated any time you refresh the, the the data. So that's worth mentioning as well. However, we'll just use today because we just need the date. We don't need the time as well. And what I will do is get rid of this value here. And I'm going to go into this measure, um, this um, conditional formatting, and I'm going to select field value, which is the only option you can select. Go to my dates table, and I'm going to find the measure which I created, which is today's date. And I'm going to click OK. Now, that is now entered today's date, which is in here. Now, every time you update this. Now this is only going to show you data points because it's a weekend in date. So you can see this is just slightly 
prior to the end of the, the weekend, which is the 5th of September, so it's the 3rd. Now any time you change this, it's going to follow the actual path of the, um, the, the it, it's, going to, it's going to change that um, vertical line on the x-axis. So that's the first thing. Now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to go and add some labels onto this. So if we scroll down, we can see we've got a few different options here, and we're going to add a data label. And we can see it is the 4th, which is today, Saturday the 4th, when I'm recording this video of September. So you can have the value there. Now, you can also add in a few other bits and pieces here. You can change the colour. Um, you can decide if you want to add the value, the name, or the name and the value. Now, the name comes from this section up here. So if we put current date in here, and then we will go down and update this value to be name and date. And we can see current date, 4th of September. And the other thing that is a new feature that was added just recently to Power BI um, is we can if we just scroll down here. We can actually select a shaded re region. So I want to I want to create a shaded region for after the current date. And here we can see. We'll create that. I'll make it slightly less shaded. And now we can actually see there's a that, that really does help to to differentiate between the current date and the actual cost in the past and the forecast costs into the future. Okay, so there's a couple of other features that you can change here. Now, the current date here is on the left hand side. So what I want to do is I want to call out that this is a forecast. Okay, so to do that, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to go and we're going to change this to forecast forecast from um, and then it's going to append that date. So we'll just update that. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here and there's an option for the horizontal position. Now, currently it's on the left, but we're going to change it to the right. And I think it just makes it makes that connection forecast from the, the 4th of the 9th, 2021. And it's in this forecast area. So you can clearly see visually this is different from this. And we can clearly call it out that it's actually a forecast. So just a little bit of a... Um, just adding a little bit of extra detail to your line graph if you're showing uh, I'm a forecast on it. Uh, the other option, of course, is we've got it at the top, which I think is probably the best place. But if you want to, you can actually add it uh, at the bottom as well. So we've got the vertical pos position where we can stick it underneath. But um, I think it's easy to, for easy to miss it there, so I'm just going to leave it at the top above. Okay, so hopefully this is something you can use when you're creating a, a, a line graph that's got uh, an actual component and a forecast component to it. Uh, as I say, I'll keep an eye on the links below if you're watching this video at some point in the future because I will add a, a dedicated forecasting video that allows you to create dynamic forecasts. Um, and if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Um, and also, if you want to subscribe and keep up to date with the latest videos, I release one more or less every week, then click the subscribe button. And apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.